Welcome back to the C-Select Show. I'm Elise Letts, and this show is about me attempting to get a PhD. So this week I'm going to introduce you to the new love of your life, because they are so beautiful, the C-Slug. So they come in all different shapes, all different sizes, and basically every color of the rainbow. Uh, they can be found in every ocean, um, from the seashore to the depths. Some even spend their entire lives swimming and aren't really slug looking at all. Some live in the sediments, and some even live in the polar sea ice. There are lots of different groups called sea slugs, and while I use the word slug all the time, it's not a very scientific word. When you think of the word sea and slug, you probably picture something like this. It looks like a snail without a shell. Slight problem. Some sea slugs have shells, but they're not snails. Or are they? In biology, when we name a group, we want the group to include every member of the group and all of the ancestors that that group shared. We call this monophyly. Monophyly allows us to identify shared characteristics and define the group. We don't want a hole in our definition. You probably already know of a good example with a big hole in it. Actually, two holes. The word reptile does not include birds or mammals, but we know that they belong on branches within this tree. So the word reptile doesn't include every member. It's a fine word, but we can't use it to define this group. The word slug has the exact same problem. If we look at the evolutionary tree of shell-less snails, we see that shells have actually been lost a few times uh, in different groups. So we have to choose, avoid using the word slug because it excludes groups that should be included, or change the definition to include all members and their ancestors. For the purposes of this vlog, I'm changing the definition. For me, a sea slug can have a shell. Or two. Actually, this little guy here caused quite a lot of confusion when it was discovered. People thought it might be a bivalve, like a mussel or a clam, but it also looked like a sea slug. Oh, it was confusing, but have no fear. We now know that it belongs with the slugs. We also have a problem when using the word sea because we now have a lot of evidence that says that land snails and slugs came from marine ones. That means that they are members of the sea slug group, which puts another hole in our definition. Nevertheless, I will keep saying sea slugs, but please remember this includes land snails and slugs, as well as some groups that have shells. So why do we care about sea slugs? We care about sea slugs because they do some really cool things. Most notably, they steal. Steal everything they can get their mouths on. Some slugs eat poisonous sea sponges, don't get poisoned, and then steal the toxic substances for their own defense. Another group of sponge-eating cells steal spicules, these spiky structures from their sponge dinners. They also use these for defense. A third group eats cnidarians, otherwise known as jellyfish and their cousins. The group Cnidaria is defined as having stinging cells called nematocysts or nidocysts. These cells are responsible for making jellyfish hugs painful. When a slug puts its mouth around a polyp, it gets stung, but it still eats the polyp, stinging cells and all. The last group I'm going to talk about today are the sacoglossins, a group of slugs that suck the cell sap out of algae cells. And they digest everything except for the chloroplasts. Remember, chloroplasts are where photosynthesis takes place? So sacoglossin slugs ingest these chloroplasts from their algal dinners, store them in their bodies, and the chloroplasts don't seem to care too much. They just keep right on photosynthesizing and making energy. At least, we think so. But we don't really know. And that's what my PhD project is about. I know I flew through these topics pretty quickly today, and I can assure you we will go into depth on all of these topics in the coming weeks, but not today. So for now, thanks for joining me, and I hope to be back soon with another episode. I hope you enjoy, and feel free to subscribe and all that stuff below. Take care. Bye.